Hey yo, hey yo, yo. What up, Logan? Not much. We're actually in the studio together. Yeah, it's been a minute. This has been fun. I had to check the headset for bugs. Yep, did, I did. I did that an hour ago. Did we tell the world about that? Uh, I think so, but I'm not sure. All right. In case we didn't, anyway, we're in a Zoom meeting, uh, staff meeting for. <laughs> this is like a while ago. This is weeks and weeks ago, and all of a sudden Logan starts freaking out, and it's all on video. He's going nuts, and apparently. This is gross. Our office gets cleaned on the regular, but this did did happen, so I'll be honest about it. There was, what well, they call them, earwigs? Uh, yeah, I called them pincher things, but apparently they're called earwigs. Yeah, them little pincher bugs. That junk was in his headset, and the earwig went for your ear. Yep. You lost it. I thought I was tweaking out because I was like, what is that? And I just, like, kept doing that, and then, like, the fourth time it happened, I, like, looked, and there was just a thing walking around the... Uh, Headset. Boop. So I was stomping on it. Boop. Junk's bad, dude. Yeah. Junk was really bad. It was really bad. So gross. So I'm in here digging in my headset, making sure I don't have any little creatures hanging out. You know what I'm saying? You know what you're saying. But hey, that was in the past, so it doesn't matter. Right. It's over with. It's been like over a month now. Yeah, you're over it. You don't lose sleep anymore about it. Nope. No? The dreams went away? Yep. The nightmares? All right. That's why I've just been from home for a little bit. <laughs> well, at any rate, it's nice to be back in here with you. Yep. We've had some really cool podcasts drop in the last couple weeks, last month and a half. A lot of fun guests we've had in. A lot of dog stuff. A lot of dog stuff. We've never done a lot of dog talking. And we've been talking dogs a lot lately. And that was fun. Learned a lot of stuff. Had some really cool guests on. Um and they absolutely crushed it. So hope everybody out there is enjoying the show. Today, though, I want to talk about something that I'm running into with a good amount of clients and stuff that, not on the dog training side, but like coaching clients or clients that, that work through our media company and, and we help with. And then also, it's a lesson that I'm constantly working with my sales team on. And I think there's a lot of opportunities, opportunities for us to apply this to everyday life. And the, the comment that I made and I make often, is that was yesterday, right? If yesterday was a great day at work, if it was a, and you were highly productive, let's say you're, you're in sales or you're a business owner, and it just was a top notch killer freaking day. That was yesterday. It's over with. It's gone. Now there's, there's today. And you've got to be dialed in and you've got to be focused. You can't be super high on those good days. But the opposite of that is you can't be super low on the, the bad days either. You got to understand that we're not in a world, we're not in an economy, we're not in a market where, hey, my business is just going to steady grow 8 to 12% a month, and it's always going to be like that on the upward trajectory. That's not the world we're in right now. And there's going to be more of an ebb and a flow. And if your emotions are tied to that roller coaster, you're, you're doomed. You're doomed. You're doomed. You're not going to make good business decisions. You're not going to make good personal decisions. You're not going to make good decisions in your relationships because you're all over the place. And either your team's going to start hating you, your wife is going to start hating you, your husband's going to start hating you, your boyfriend, girlfriend's going to hate you, kids are going to hate you because they never know what they're going to get. Like you're all over the damn place. And so you don't get too high on the good days, but you don't get super down on the bad days either because yesterday's over with. Today, is a new opportunity. Today is a chance to atone for whatever shortfalls you had the day before. And, you know, or it's an opportunity to do better than you did the day before, even if it was a great day. Today's a new day and a new opportunity. But if you stay living in yesterday, you're going to miss out on every opportunity today. And what I mean by that, living in yesterday, living in last week, living in, in, in last month's performances, um, I used to be in real estate back in the day. And when I was in the real estate industry, it was always funny to me because you had your top performers and that was very consistent. And then every once in a while, like once or twice a year, the top performers would get beat out, right? And somebody would come in and they'd have the highest sales that month. They sold the most houses, maybe the most units. Maybe they had the highest dollar volume. Maybe it's mortgages and they closed the most loans or they had the highest loan origination fees or, or whatever it may be. And then you would never hear from them again, you know, maybe nine months later. 
but they're not even close to the top the month following that that top month. And what these people, I never took these people seriously because all they ever showed was they had potential, but what they didn't have is the discipline, right? And so they would crush it one month and they'd live off that success and those wins for three, four, five months. Like, man, why am I broke? Well, probably because your lifestyle is based off that one good month you had. It's not based off the average when you take the next five months off and your numbers are dog shit. You're basically unemployed when you average it all out. But they're talking like, oh, I'm a top performer. I'm a top earner. And that's the world they live in. And that's what they think about. And they're stuck on that. Then they have a down month. Then they have a down month. Then they have a down month. They have a down month. Now they're in their head. I'm not a performer. I'm not a closer. I don't execute. So they'll get dialed in and they'll get focused and then boom, have a good month. But they never had two good months in a row because whether it was high or it was low, they're always living off of that and they're focused off of that rather than seeing every day, every week and every month as a new opportunity to go out there and get it and win again. And so the top, top performers who are always you know, in your top two, top three, top five ex- at execution man, they are steady. They, they might have a little bit of this, but their focus, their discipline doesn't change. Their focus and their discipline day in and day out is steady, right? Days there, uh, Almaris said something the other day uh, to somebody that we were recruiting. And she goes, look, you, the biggest thing you can, because they were talking about how they're very motivated. And she's like, I don't need you to be motivated. I need you to be disciplined. And I was like, Ooh, girl, preach. That's good. That's good. Because discipline is going to get you when mo- get you where you're trying to go when motivation fails you. You're not always motivated. I know I'm not always motivated, but I'm still going to show up at work. I'm still going to execute. I'm going to still get this done. Hold on one second, everybody. Got to click this little button right here. This doesn't look like it's working, though. So that's going to be a minute. Yeah, these phones are messed up, man. Shout out to Verizon. You suck. I've been with you forever, forever. We got so many damn lines. This this phone, I don't, I shouldn't even done this. I shouldn't even taken this on to try to do it from my phone. Junk's whack, Logan. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I think we're good. We're just gonna. Are we gonna have success? Oh, oh. Success. Lunch is on the way. Nice. Like that? How you just did that little transition? Because I stuck with it. Right. I didn't give up. The phone's got me unmotivated, but I'm disciplined, and I know why people got to eat. So I'm going to click, clack, click, clack till the chickie shows up. Discipline will get you where you're trying to go when your motivation fails you. Everybody's New Year's resolutions fail. They're not not motivated. They're motivated, but they're not disciplined to maintain them. Right? Everybody. Because they're motivated. They're not disciplined. Maybe it's health. Maybe it's work. Maybe it's more time with family. Who knows what it is? They're motivated by something but they're not disciplined enough to take action. Discipline will take you way further than motivation ever, ever will. So how do you keep yourself disciplined? You keep yourself disciplined because discipline is about the things that you can control. Motivation is about the things that may inspire you. Motivation is about the things that uh, entice you, but really you can't control. If you're motivated by the potential outcome of your hard work and efforts, you're motivated by the financial gains, by the notoriety, by the success You really have no control over that part. What you do have control over is the discipline it takes to take every step necessary that puts you in the best likelihood of being successful. People are like, well, I deserve to be successful. You don't deserve anything. When it comes to business and life and success, if you put forth the effort, you make good decisions, you're constantly growing, constantly educating yourself, trying to look for ways to improve, learning from your failures, trying to be a better human being. You deserve the opportunity at success. You deserve the opportunity to put forth the effort and take the steps necessary to be successful. But the key thing here is what you deserve, you have to change your your perspective. I don't deserve any of my employees. I don't deserve any of my business partners. I don't deserve the mentors I have in my life. I'm blessed and humbled to have the opportunity to work with these individuals and these people and learn from them and help invest in the, um, into them and pour into them so that I can help them achieve their goals. And if they achieve their goals, that probably helps me achieve my goals. I deserve the opportunity. 
I don't deserve the end result yet. Because if I deserved that end result, I would already have the end result. I don't. But I thank God every day that I have the opportunity to keep striving for it. And it's that discipline piece. Now, if I'm in a situation where I get hung up on what happened yesterday, am I going to take the right steps today to get where I need to go? The answer is absolutely not. If I'm 24 hours later, I'm still celebrating a big sales day. Well, if I'm celebrating, then I'm not working. I'm not talking to new clients that need our help. If I'm hung up celebrating, or if it was a terrible sales day or a terrible sales week, and I'm just in my head, why doesn't anybody pick us? Why aren't people answering the phone? Why aren't we? And I'm ignoring the fact that we got 50, 60, 70, 100 leads every day coming into us. But I hung up on why the 100 leads from yesterday didn't answer their phone because it's Memorial Day and people are hanging out with their families. Am I going to be able to execute on that opportunity I have in front of me now? Absolutely not because I'm living in the past. So if yesterday doesn't matter, that means last week doesn't matter. And it means last month doesn't matter. You got to focus on today. You got to be disciplined about today. Now, what does matter about yesterday, the week before, and the month before, and the years before? Well, the lessons you learned, but you don't have to stop moving forward in order to implement the lessons you've learned along the way. We got to stop getting hung up on yesterday, though. And so many of you are so focused on yesterday. So many of you have screwed up so many things in your life in the past. You self-sabotage yourself and you don't allow yourself to find happiness, success, great relationships because you think you don't deserve it because of who you were or things you did. Guys, I've done so much stupid shit in my life. I've ruined so many relationships in my life. I've made so many bad decisions in my life. (laughs) You got to learn from them and you got to keep working and you got to keep going and you got to keep trying to improve. I don't deserve success. I deserve the opportunity to be successful. I deserve the opportunity to to impact people's lives. I deserve the opportunity to change my life. I deserve the opportunity to change my family's life. I deserve the opportunity to alter the future of the next generations of the Wilson family. I deserve the chance to do it. But I've got to be disciplined enough to do it. And there's been seasons where I was very hung up on mistakes I've made. Long, long time ago, you know, when we, when we, we went bankrupt, we lost everything. It took me a while to get out of that. I'm not taking opportunities. I didn't feel like I deserved opportunities. And it took time. I had to get myself right. Not perfect. Far from perfect. But I had to get myself right to get my confidence up a little bit. Get that internal swagger up a little bit. To where I feel like I deserve the opportunity. Now you're given the opportunity. What are you going to do with it? Are you disciplined enough to do something with it? It doesn't mean every day you're motivated. You're not going to be. I already talked about that. That's where the discipline comes in. Yesterday is only worth its lessons. Last week is only worth its lessons. Last year and the years before that, it's only worth its lessons. Are you showing up today? question the recruit asked me yesterday what do you like most about what you guys do and my answer was because yesterday doesn't matter that was my answer to her every day I wake up and it is a new opportunity that's it if I had a bad day with my family yesterday if I was being a shithead and you know grumpy about stuff and didn't have a great day with 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 Devin because I was less than kind or understanding or compassionate or I had been in meetings and talking all day and listening to people all day. And I didn't want to hear anything when I got home. And I probably didn't communicate that in the best way. Logan's never witnessed that before. Um, No, never, never. It's like, I hear you. I just need you to understand I don't care. Right? Like, what the hell? Who says that to somebody? But I said that to Devin. I've said that to Logan before. Like, I don't understand what's wrong with me, y'all. Like, (laughs) shit. Like, there's moments. Okay, but now... I've gone to bed. It's the next day. I have an opportunity to be like, hey, son, I'm sorry. I'm not really a shithead. I was just, it was a moment. Hey, Devin, I'm sorry. I was a shithead. You've been with me long enough to know that I'm not like an overarching shithead. I just had a shithead moment. And luckily, (laughs) because of God's love for me alone, (laughs) I have a wife and kids who have so much grace for me. 
they don't make me live in that moment. They, they let me move on from that moment and try again the next day, right? And that's, that's another thing about, like, our family kind of as a whole. Like, we have teenage kids. Logan's going to be 20 in December. Kiki just turned 17. They do some stupid shit sometimes. Like, that's just... Having butter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? Like, <laughs> the, the, for Father's Day, I said I wanted a Blackstone grill. And um, we're, we're horrible gift givers in the Wilson fam. Well, maybe I am. Oh, Logan's pretty bad at this, too. If we get something for somebody we care about, it's very difficult for us to not give it to them. Oh. So a lot of times, like, we're great gift givers. We just aren't good at keeping it. I gave Kiki right. her birthday gift, like, months before. She forgot about it. Yeah. But it was her birthday, because <laughs> I gave it her, like, months ago. <laughs> right. So he re-gifted it, and it was hysterical. But if I get something for Devin, like, I want to see Devin's reaction. I want to see her response. I'm so excited to give her the gift. Um, or with the kids, like, I've always, last year when we got Kiki a car for her 16th birthday, we had that car for, like, five days. It was the worst five days ever. It was the worst five days ever because I had to sit here and look at this car and I wanted to get her response, but we waited till her birthday and that was fine. But anyway, I said, I wanted this Blackstone, Devin and Jenna, super sweet. They went and got the Blackstone for me, um, got it set up. And Logan, he is the smash burger King. He's going to make us smash burgers for dinner on Sunday. Nope. Monday. Monday. So, um, we get this thing put together. It's on the back deck. Logan's got all his stuff. He's coming in and out with all of his things. The grill is on because we had to season it, so it was hot as all get out. Neither of us has u- have used one of these things before. He uses a griddle in the house when he makes these smash burgers. Logan, how, how fast did those burgers cook? Like I didn't have even have a chance to like <laughs> grab stuff and like flip them. They were already like cooked. Yeah. Usually I wait a couple minutes on the griddle. So I'm jumping in. I'm trying to help. He's grabbing buns. He's grabbing seeds. Like it was, it was chaos. But we knocked out some delicious ass burgers. They were really good. But the funny thing was, I was like, son, you gotta get some butter. Throw that on the griddle. You know, when you cook this stuff up. And so I see my son walking through the house with a palm full of butter. And <laughs> apparently, it was just what was left. That was all of the, the, was the no stick of butter. It was on like a little butter tray. So Logan grabs the butter, goes outside, and my immediate response when I see things like this, what the hell are you doing? Like, what what are you doing? I, I got the butter. I'm going to go put it on the, on the grill. And so I was like, son, first of all, that's not enough butter. Why is it just in your hand? So now he goes to the fridge, finds a stick of butter it was wrapped in, in paper. It was in the garage in that fridge. Not We don't just keep butter laying in the garage. So it's in the fridge in the garage. He now has... A full stick in paper of butter takes that outside. No problem. 30 seconds later, my son, who's brilliant, by the way, is walking back through the house with the butter that was in his hand a few minutes ago, which has definitely started to melt by now, in his hand again. I lost it. I lost it. I just was so shook by the thought process that's taking place in this moment. Now, we worked through it. I said some things. Logan, it's kind of funny because he's just like, whatever, and kind of fussed at me. And then he goes back to the grill. We don't, these interactions happen kind of regularly (laughs) between someone in our house. None of us get so hung up on the silliness of yesterday, right? Like by time, like we had a great dinner. It was delicious. Tell you goodnight. Tell you I love you. Love you too, Dad. Like, I'll see you tomorrow. And it's the same thing. He and Kiki got into it the other day. It was totally crazy. Kiki, like, fires off. She goes from, like, zero to 100 like that. I don't know where she gets it from. Probably her mom. (laughs) Do you think so too, Logan? Yep. Do you think it's mom for sure? For sure. Yeah, definitely Devin. I don't know who else it would be. Yeah, it surely isn't me. I'm Mr. Calm, Cool, and Collected on a daily basis. Well, anyway, they get into it. I find out about it, have a conversation. Like, they're not hung up on it. It will become a joke now. Like, we'll rag on each other about it. But the reality is, yeah, she overstepped. She really irritated her brother. But 10 minutes after that, had she called and be like, Logan, I need your help with something. We don't operate where we're hung up on someone pissing you off 10 minutes ago, he's there to take care of his sister and do whatever she needs, right? If I'm a shitty dad one day, they're not holding that against me the next day. 
if they screw something super stupid up, we're going to talk about it and we move on from it. If it ever comes up again, typically it's in a poking fun way, busting balls in our family, but we're not like hung up on it, judging each other. And right. I mean, yeah. that's just not how it is because yesterday doesn't matter. We have today together. Everybody's healthy. Everybody's happy. We're so fortunate to, that that is the case. Everyone's happy and healthy. Like we have an opportunity to try again today. Yesterday doesn't matter. Right. And it's even if it's good shit, like, okay, that was cool. It's a great memory. Something didn't great happen. There was a lesson learned, but we're moved on and focused on today. Allow yourself the freedom to move on. Allow yourself the freedom to just say, I'm sorry. Another great example of this. Katie, Peyton, Almaris, Devin, and I went on a little trip uh, last week. And we're flying back. We're coming through the airport. And um, Katie got hung up in security. Katie and I travel together a lot. And it is rare that there is not some sort of little issue that's typically really funny. Well, this particular TSA agent, uh, they weren't super cool. And it, it became a bit of a thing for no reason whatsoever. It, they were giving Katie a hard time about something. I chimed in. Almaris chimed in. It didn't help the situation at all. And it, it got pretty stupid. So Katie gets on and goes through. Then they scan my passport. This other lady scans my passport and something pops up. And like, can you scan it again? Scan it again, something pops up. And I say, hey, could it could it be that the thing scanning my picture is is rotated sideways? Like, should I tilt my head? Should it's, And they didn't think that was funny. And clearly that couldn't possibly be the issue that I fly weekly, basically. And I've never once had a problem going through that particular part. But there was a problem. This camera was tilted. And so it changed my face. So it's scanning me sideways. And obviously, he's trying to fa do facial recognition. And I thought maybe it was a computer thing. Next thing I know, they get the manager to come over. While this is happening, I'm fussing at Katie. We're yelling back and forth at each other as she's going through the the body scanner and the, the luggage part. So I'm sure we're really making a lot of friends. There was no line in this beautiful little airport we were at. Now there's about 30 people lined up behind me. Peyton and Almaris are like, Josh, what are you doing? And I'm like, man, I don't know. Manager comes over. He's looking at stuff, clicking things, looking at me, looking at my passport. Next thing you know, the supervisor comes over. This dude comes over with a book. He has a binder. And he starts pulling pictures out of this binder. And he's like, picture and looking at me and asking me to scan my passport again. I'm like, wait a minute. Are they trying to match me up with somebody in this damn book? Again, I fly all the time. No issues. <laughs> so finally, they let me through. I get through the scanner. They won't, they make me take my shoes off, they make me take my hat off, they make me take my belt off, all things nobody ever makes me do because I'm pre-check, all right? But I said, sir, I'm pre-check, I don't, I don't need to take this stuff off, correct? Well, did they give you the blue ticket? I'm like, blue, blue ticket? No, I was just over there with the supervisor, the manager, um, you know, Jesus himself, like all, everybody was involved in me getting through the check-in counter. He's like, no blue ticket, no pre-check. Oh, sir, here's my boarding pass. I'm pre-check. No blue ticket. No pre-check. I need your boots off. I need your hat off. I need your belt off. No problem. So now I'm taking off all this stuff. And who wears boots on a plane? Me, because I don't got to take them off. So now I'm taking them off. Now I'm sweating. We're in California where I never sweat, by the way. So I'm pissed off because this is whole situation. I get through the security thing. I grab my shit and I start yelling at Katie. I'm pissed off because I just knew that it was her fault that I was getting in trouble with TSA because she pissed them all off. Two minutes later, I look at her and I say, you know what, Katie, I apologize. If someone's, if that, what was happening to you was happening to me and people started chiming in, I would have lost my shit. I would have gone nuts. I would have gone nuts. I'm sorry. And she looked at me and says, I'm sorry too. I've already moved on. We continue on to the plane. We get on the plane. And five minutes after they close the doors and we're getting ready to push back, all of our phones start beeping. Your flight's been canceled. 
So we all get to get off the plane and we're trying to figure out what to do. And all the sheep go and get in line at the airport and they're trying to figure out all this stuff. I'm like, let's get the hell out of here and figure it out. And I'm thankful. I'm thankful that we have the means, we have the ability to not be stuck. I'm thankful that for the most part, there wasn't a place I had to be that night. There wasn't that pressure. There was some pressure with some of our companions and we got them out earlier. But for the most part, it was fine. But here's the point of the story. We ended up being in California for another two days, Devin, Katie, and I. Al Maris and Peyton, we got out the next morning early. We had a great time. We had a great time. Katie and I totally embarrassed each other in the airport, in front of people. I don't do that. She doesn't do that. Like, we were legit fussing at each other. It's ridiculous. I'm so embarrassed by how I was acting. It didn't mess up a single minute of our time. We got out of that airport. We apologized. We moved on. Honestly, it became a funny-ass story that we joked about that night, the next day, telling other people about it. Poor Devin, she zips right through security. She walks to the other end of the terminal, goes to the bathroom, comes back. None of us are still there, and she's like, what the hell's going on? And then here comes Katie through. Here comes me through, and it's just freaking tornado. And Devin's like, holy shit. Like, can y'all relax? Can you guys chill out? Ten minutes ago, basically yesterday, it's done and over with. What are we going to do with that rest of that time? And we had a great time together. We had a great time together. Moving on. There was a lesson learned in that moment, in that situation, for all of us. Could have handled it better. Could have handled it differently. Acknowledged where we screwed up. And we just moved on. And if it gets referenced again, it's a joke. So when the recruit asked me, what do you like most about what you do? Why do you love it so much? Because yesterday doesn't matter. Whether I was the greatest or the worst, yesterday doesn't matter. I got today to make it right. I've got today to to get at bat again and give it another shot. I deserve the opportunity to be successful. I deserve the opportunity to make it right. I deserve the opportunity to put in the work to win. I deserve the opportunity to show my kids how much I love them. I deserve the opportunity to show my wife day in and day out how much she means to me and how special she is to me. I deserve the opportunity to go after whatever I want. And so do you. Stop sabotaging yourself. The world's going to throw enough shit at you where you don't need to do it yourself. Life is hard enough. Life is random enough. The stuff I hear about on a daily basis of things people and families are going through and people who are passing away and accidents that are happening and kids are deathly ill and just tragedies. No one deserves those things. It's just life. It's just life. But if you wake up the next morning, you deserve the opportunity to go again. So do you. We're going to catch you next time on the Big Dog Podcast. We love you. We appreciate you. Hope this helps somebody. I know it helped me. Son, I'll catch you next time.